Oh, come on, no. It's like a magic eraser. I've literally seen companies charge two, $300 to basically do the same thing. Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to another episode of Legit Flip. To get you guys up to speed, this is my 2001 BMW 540i with the coveted six-speed manual transmission. It has 119,000 miles, a clean title, and I only paid $900 for this car. Now, as you can imagine, this car had a lot of issues when I bought it, and in each video, I tally up what I've spent. So for example, I fixed a rough running engine with a coil for 50 bucks, a hard to shift transmission for free, and I even include the cost of gas, which at this point is sort of an investment because I filled up the tank about three months ago, so I think this fuel is now worth around $50 more than I paid. So technically, I could siphon it out and deduct that from the tally? In the second E39 video, I did some cleaning and detailing for a grand total of $40. And in the video after that, I did 15 separate mechanical repairs for about $1,100. So I only have $2,200 into this car. And in today's video, I'm gonna invest another $100 into restoring these nasty leather seats. These are some of the worst leather seats I've ever seen. They were probably in poor condition before and then someone attempted to dye them very improperly, I might add, and we need to remove all of that dye and, and re-dye them. So with that, let's get to work and get these seats out of the car. All right, so I'm gonna start with what I hope to be the easiest part of this job, which is removing the rear seat. All right, what are we gonna find under here? Wow, they didn't even take this out. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. All right. All right, so here's our seat bottom. Yeah, they really just went up to here with the dye and they, they caked it on. We're gonna have to remove that. Not too bad, just a little bit of human hair. Not the end of the world. On a receipt for pizza from 2004. Doesn't say how much though. Probably like eight bucks back then. All right, more of the same. At least we get a good idea of what the leather is supposed to look like. All right, then we just have some T50s for the front seats. All right, I'm gonna move this out and I'll probably move this back. Just get it in a good position so we can get all the dye in there. MB Financial, bank receipt, available balance $154.29. Definitely cannot fix a car like this for that. Unless you're doing it yourself, then you can. Okay, I think that's our only connector. Seat should come right out. Be very gentle taking seats out. It's really nerve wracking doing this on a super expensive car. Like when I worked at the dealer and had to take seats out of $180,000 Mercedes, you could easily scratch the dash or something. It's, it wouldn't make for a good day. Gentle, 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 nasty. We got them out. All right, so with the seats out, we have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna be here probably for two or three days, but uh, let's just get right to it. This is a little intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my gosh, it's like just everything's glued, glued on. Wow, and I'm gonna go ahead and separate the seat back and the seat bottom as well. Okay, so that's good enough. We're just gonna leave it separated here. We're not gonna mess around with the harness or anything. We just simply need to get in under here. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you everything I'm using for this job here in a minute, but I've been experimenting with cleaning off some of this dye, this lighter colored dye that they put on here. Let's see what we're gonna get. Yeah, so we just pulled off the first layer of dirt right there. Now there's the dye. Let's see if we can get down to the original leather. Almost there. Okay, that's pretty good. We don't need 100% of it off. This would be more than fine uh, to re-dye it. And yeah, we might stand a chance at making this nice. All right, guys, before we get to some more very satisfying leather dye removal on the E39 seats, I wanted to show you a very simple way of restoring the leather seats in your car 
using this Clyde's leather recoloring balm. So obviously what I'm doing to the E39 seats is very extreme and more along the lines of a color change where I have to disassemble everything, strip all the old leather dye off, and then I'll be using a very strong liquid dye. So it's definitely not for the faint of heart and you can make mistakes and damage things. So what I'm doing here is way more applicable to all of us out there who don't wanna change the color of our seats, but wanna restore them and make them look much better, especially after 22 years, like on my ML55. Now this process just takes a few minutes and the first step is cleaning the seat with the interior cleaning foam from Clyde's. Very easy to do, just rub it on with a microfiber. Next, I've applied the Clyde's leather prep and deglaze onto the corner of my microfiber. A little bit of this goes a long way and you're gonna see that this is going to turn into a matte finish like this right here after it dries. And that means we've stripped away all the old waxes and greases that have been sitting on this seat for probably the last 22 years. Now for the very satisfying part, you're just gonna take a little bit of this on your foam sponge and just work it in. And it is seriously like magic unbelievable results here. Unlike some dyes, this is actually reconditioning the leather. Other dyes can kind of dry it out and the cracks get worse later with time. This is definitely one of the most satisfying things you can do to your car. It only takes like five minutes per seat and the difference is night and day as I'm gonna show you here in a few seconds. This is too much fun. I just wanna to go to a junkyard and restore leather seats for a day. A little sneak peek on the driver's side. So I've never done what I'm doing to the E39 before using a really strong liquid dye. So I'm a little nervous about that, but I've been using Clyde's for years and the results are so good. And I asked the guys at Clyde's if they can hook me up with a discount code for my viewers and they did. It's legit 20 and that's gonna get you 20% off their entire website. It's like a magic eraser. Okay, last one, I swear. It's just too satisfying. I wanna show you guys how to repair very minor bolster wear. So what we're doing here is Kind of extreme on the driver's seat. That one was pretty bad. This was very, very typical of an older car. And then I'm gonna show you on the CL65, if you just have wear on the bolster, you can fix that too and it matches perfectly. And don't be shy. You can restore your center console as well. Check it out. And yes, the previous owner installed a cup holder in the middle of this. That was not factory. Look at that. Look at that. When you're done, you just wanna wipe off the excess with a microfiber towel just like so. Then you let it cure for about 24 hours and these are the results. Are you kidding me? This looks so good. I've done this to quite a few of my cars and I'm always shocked at how well it works. Look at this bolster. So before the bolster looked like this and now it looks like this and the leather is conditioned so it's not hard anymore. It feels kind of like it did back in the year 2000. And I'm not even done. Next, I'm gonna use the Clyde's Remoisturizing Cream. This is the last step, and this is some good stuff to use even if you haven't just restored your seats. This is great for maintenance purposes to keep your leather nice and supple, and it smells amazing too. I just finished off the driver's seat with the Moisturizing Cream, and the driver's seats are always the ones in the worst condition. Obviously, they're used all the time, uh, but this looks about 100 times better, and just just for a few dollars in material and maybe like 10 minutes total of work. And I know what you guys are thinking, Alex, is this stuff gonna come off on my pants? No, it's not at all. Look at this, I'm pushing hard on here. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. So your factory seats are dyed. The leather off a cow doesn't come in different colors. They do have to dye it. And once the Clyde's recoloring balm soaks into the leather, it does not come off. Seriously, look at this, nothing. Watch, I'll wipe the entire seat bottom as hard as I can. And this stuff doesn't even rub off even after a couple of hours, but if you let it cure for the full 24, it's not going anywhere. See, look at that, nothing. And here's the side bolster on my CL65 AMG. As you can see, it's worn out like many side bolsters are. So we're gonna use the same process, clean it with the foam. Then we're gonna deglaze it. And as you can see, it kind of turns into a matte finish. And then we just apply the balm let it dry for 24 hours. And so after 24 hours, this is what it looks like. And what's nice when you're doing quick spot repairs like this is it blends in beautifully with the rest of the seat. And then we're just gonna top it off with the moisturizing cream. And there you go, a quality five minute repair job on a side bolster with 135,000 miles. 
and it looks fantastic. I've literally seen companies charge two, three hundred dollars to basically do the same thing. So this stuff actually comes in a bunch of different colors. So I'll leave you a link down below to the website so you can check it out. They have a bunch of other awesome products as well. And the code legit 20, it works in combination with any other sales they're having. So I thought that was an error and I emailed them and they said, no, that's correct. So they're really hooking us up here. Uh, so definitely take advantage. And you can also use this on anything else that's leather, like a motorcycle seat or a leather couch in your house. Uh, so with that, let's get to some more stripping of leather dye off of the E39 seats. And I actually think it might be paint. Check this out. All right, so I've already started cleaning this area here. It actually wasn't too hard to do. And uh, we're retaining the leather grain, which is important. I'll show you what I'm using there. Uh, but you can see here in these areas, normally when you're using leather dye, it kind of bleeds into the leather. That's what you want. Um, but in this case, it literally just looks like they painted the surface. You can see here, I mean, this is really thick. So I guess it's possible they used leather dye, or maybe just a lot of it. But uh, this looks very similar to paint to me, and I think this is where they literally had a paint can resting for a while. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you two methods of removing old leather dye. This GLD solvent cleaner from Color Lock. Uh, this works really good. This will take out the staining from jeans on some light colored leather, um, and it'll straight up remove your dye. So we're just gonna put it on a little rag here. And it does take a little bit of work, but there you go. That's just a few seconds of rubbing, and we've done this entire section, so. It's not too bad. And also, let me show you guys another option because this can get a little pricey if you're doing a big project like that. And that is simply getting some denatured alcohol. All right, so I'll show you guys how this works. Works quite well, actually. Keep in mind, there is a ton of this stuff on there. There you go. This does an excellent job of cleaning the leather and it doesn't burn the leather, it doesn't remove the grain. And I've done a bunch of research on it and it seems like this would be safe on leather. Now go ahead and do your own research or use the GLD cleaner because it is officially meant for leather. Um, but they kind of smell similar, so I'm not really exactly sure what that's made of. Um, but it works well, so does this, and this costs a lot less. All right guys, so I blew all the dirt out with the air gun. And then I just wanted to do an initial pass with some multi-purpose interior foam cleaner. So I just sprayed a little bit of the old tough stuff on there and got a brush. And look what's going on here. There is a chance we don't even need any harsh chemicals. Look at this paint. This, this, is, this is crazy. Can we do this all with tough stuff? I mean, this stuff is, it's pretty tough. I'll give it that. Oh, come on, no. Get out of here. Are you kidding me? This is crazy. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing for tough stuff. I've used this like my entire life just for normal, simple interior cleanup jobs. It's either really, really good or abnormally strong, which in that case you might not want to use on an everyday basis. But how is this strong enough to remove this dye slash paint? We might be able to do the whole thing with like 10 bucks worth of tough stuff. All right, so I have some mineral spirits laying around in the shop and I've used this to clean paint and stains and stuff, not necessarily on, on cars, but this is kind of a harsher chemical. And look at that, it doesn't even touch this. It doesn't remove anything at all, but we use tough stuff that I think I picked up like a four pack or something on Amazon and a little bit of, <laughs> just melts it away. Oh man, this is so much fun. Look at that. Bam, this stuff is tough, that is for sure. Okay, so I guess it was a good thing this guy never brought it to a car wash that uses tough stuff because they would have destroyed his entire interior or made it better. Um, but anyway, this is quite the turn of events. I'm probably not gonna use anything else but this now. So anyway, uh, tough stuff, not sponsored at all. They've just literally been using this since I was 15 years old. So I've never read the back of this, but it's got all of its automotive and boat uses. And then apparently you can use this for cleaning appliances, for mica, bathroom fixtures, asphalt, ceramic tile painted walls. Wow, wow, you learn something new every day. All right, I bet you guys have never seen anyone geek out so hard over tough stuff, but there you have it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of pre-soak this entire seat with this. My only recommendation with the tough stuff is if you're gonna use this on your car, which again, I have for a very long time, 
I would definitely test it out in an inconspicuous spot because, I mean, geez, if it's doing this, I know this is a low quality job that, that whoever did this did, but I mean, I could imagine it, it could damage leather seats. I don't know. I mean, in this case, I love it, but I would hate to do this on, you know, a darker colored leather or something and then have a light spot, something like that. This brush is key though too. So we're able to get in all these little nooks and crannies. See if it'll take away the, yep. <laughs> that was definitely home paint. Someone just left a, a paint can sitting on the seat. Oh, wait a minute, nope. Tough stuff, come on, you can't get that? Uh, tough stuff, what's wrong with you? Okay, well, we'll have to work on that a little bit more. All right, here's a little denatured alcohol. See if that helps out. Well, it's not helping out with that, but I can tell you it's gonna be an excellent last step here. Look at how clean it gets it. All right guys, it's the next day. Uh, there's about eight hours worth of labor into what we have done so far, which is looking very promising. This just, oh my gosh, was this a lot of work. But look at this, the seats weren't even that bad. So this is obviously where the seat belt straps were resting for a long time, but overall, the leather seems to be in excellent condition. And with the tough stuff and our little brush on the drill, we're able to get into all these little nooks and crannies. We've even cleaned up the stitching for the leather, which looks great. This bottom seat is in a little bit worse condition. Uh, we were able to get the paint off, but some areas kind of peeled off. This is where they had spilled the paint or dye or whatever they used, and it kind of peeled up a little bit of the factory dye. So you can see that's the factory dye, and that's what lies underneath. So that should hopefully be all fixed up once we get our liquid dye on here. But overall, the leather is in great shape. We didn't damage any of the grain. It's all still there. All right, so before I start cleaning the front seats, I'm going to dye the rear seats. I'm kind of dying to see how this is going to look. So I just want to use some sandpaper. This is special sandpaper for leather and it has a little sponge in between. Any area that's had peeling, I'm just gonna kind of sand a little bit. You don't wanna go too crazy though or you'll remove the grain. Also, we'll probably never see this as the seat back goes over it, but I'll still hit this as well. All right, here we go. One last cleaning before the fluid leather and then the dye. And I'll probably let this dry for about 15 minutes before we do any repair work. All right, so I've sanded down our trouble areas on the seat bottom and also on the seat back, so everything is nice and even. And then I just went over all the leather with the sandpaper, just a light scuff. And at this point, I'm gonna use some of the leather cleaning spirits. So this will be kind of our final clean. And then we're gonna be using some fluid leather from Color Lock, and these are specific uh, to the color of this interior, as you can see, BMW Sand Beige. Um, so I've never used any of these Color Lock products before. This is my first time, so we'll see how this all ends up. All right, so here is our liquid leather, and a little bit of this goes a long way as well. They don't give you too much of it because of that. So, so we're just going to be using this little spatula here to spread it out. And I'm practicing on these back seats first because that driver bolster is going to need quite a bit of this. So we're just going to spread it out really smooth. Just do a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So now this dries uh, for about two hours and then we can sand it down. And you can already tell that it's built up and filled in the void there. So this is gonna look really nice once we're done. Do all the places where the top layer of the factory color has come off and we'll fill it in here. And this is obviously meant for leather. So our dye will soak into this as well. Um, but it's nice that we're starting with the factory color anyway. So this is really nice. Also, if you have cracks in your leather, you can just fill it and it's going to dry, but it's still going to be flexible because this product is specifically made for leather. It's called fluid leather. All right, and on the seat back, we're going to do the exact same thing. And this is worn out right where the armrest sits. So there's a lot of movement going on here. This is also very satisfying. I'm not going to lie. Pretty much everything in this video is very fun and satisfying. All right, since we have two hours of dry time for the fluid leather, I think it's time to clean up this front seat. It's been a while. All right, so I'm starting off all of the cleaning with some shop air. All right, you guys know the drill. <laughs> We're gonna use some tough stuff and our drill to clean these up. And normally 
This would have just been my first method of cleaning and then I would use the chemicals, but kind of learned we really don't even need any chemicals at all. I mean, tough stuff apparently is a strong chemical because it's melting this stuff as we speak. Look at that. Hey, it looks pretty good now. All right, let's do a wipe right now, kind of get an idea. All right, there we go. Look at how easy that is. Look at how much paint slash dye they used in these areas. That's going to be tough, but not as tough as this stuff. All right, I'm, I'm done with dad jokes. We're, we're good. All right, I've done one complete pass on the bottom. Let's see what we got here. It's getting there. It's easy to do kind of the big areas and see a result right away. You know, I'm only like 10 minutes into this seat, but probably be about two hours, maybe two and a half hours for this one seat because of all the nooks and crannies. And I don't know if I need to get it that perfect, but because I know that I can, I will. And uh, I'm really curious to see what the real condition of these front seats are because like this passenger side, I, I don't think it's gonna be that bad. I don't know why this guy did all this work. All right, after about an hour, I have the passenger seat bottom looking like so. I'm starting to wear the factory leather a little bit in these areas because I'm trying to get this paint out of here. I'm worried that the dye is probably not gonna change the color of any of this remaining paint. So I'm still kind of picking away at that, but I did disconnect this here so we could get in here and somewhat in here. I'm not gonna go too crazy though because as you can see, we're just wearing into the leather. Uh, if we try to get a lot of that paint out, you're never going to see any of that at all. That's why it's got a line of paint. He wasn't able to get in there. Um, but I'm working on this one too. I just finished a pass on this side, kind of taking a break from picking pieces out. And yeah, my first wipe is so satisfying. Look at that. So nice. All right, so a moment of truth on this outside bolster on the passenger side. And yes, this is as messy as you think it is. Pretty bad. Luckily, the shop needed a big cleaning anyway, so it's okay. All right, let's see what lies beneath. A very nice and clean bolster. Wow. Why? Why did he do this? These were such nice seats. Unbelievable. All right, so I'm done cleaning up the passenger seat. And this took a total of about three hours uh, with really no breaks whatsoever. So just a ton of manual labor to get this job done. But it definitely helped to remove this guy here. And you can see there's a lot more wear on the seat bottom as you'd probably expect. Um, but because I've been using tough stuff on this for the last three hours, we're gonna go ahead and kick a fan on and dry this seat for probably about an hour before we start to dye it. So the fluid leather has dried and we're just gonna give it a light sand. All right, and there you have it. I'll give it one final wipe here before the dye. Probably just go over everything again. All right, guys, moment of truth. We're gonna start dying. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous right now. Many, many hours have gone into prep. So if this doesn't look good, you know, I'm gonna be kind of upset. Also, in case you're wondering, the alternative, a few alternatives, buying used seats on eBay, like $1,500, $2,000 uh, for a set if you could find the sports seats uh, and they're used, they're not perfect. Going to an upholstery shop, a couple grand there, and having this done professionally is like $1,000, $1,500 also, and they're probably gonna use the exact same stuff. So for a couple hundred dollars, I'll take what we get. And what we're gonna do here is just kind of wipe it and not going to really see much of a difference here because we did such a good job cleaning it and this is the factory color let's get to some areas here that are a little bit worn out and since we've removed all the previous paint this dye will soak into the leather and we're probably gonna have to do like three to six coats here so we rub it on dab it there's a little wear spot right here so not really going to get that instant gratification just yet because we have to work this in a few times. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right at this line here. So I won't do the entire seat in one shot and we'll dry this one off. All right, so I do think it helps when your sponge is kind of saturated, but I'm just taking one section at a time. 
wiping it down that way. Moving on to the next section just so I don't forget anything. And going on, it's a little scary because it looks very streaky, but it does actually soak in because we are using dye, unlike our painter friend who owned this car before. Okay, so after I've covered everything, using the backside, I'm just doing kind of these little blobs you'd call them. I don't know. And that's kind of just getting any of the excess off. And even after this, you'll see that there are still lines in here, but they do go away. So yeah, what you just saw there is one coat of half of the seat bottom. So it really is mostly prep work. And if you guys don't have a heat gun, you're in luck because a blow dryer works a lot better in this case. We don't need a ton of heat. We just need kind of more volume of air. And I'll do this for about two minutes, maybe something like that. That's about it. And it's impossible to see on camera, but the little streaky lines are disappearing. They're, they're already gone. All right, so I think four coats is the magic number. Uh, I don't think putting any more on here would do anything. And we still have our grain. Everything is nice and even, but this looks amazing. So we stopped right here and you can see what the other side looks like and what that side did look like. So this is the discoloration mostly from us cleaning. And you can see it has kind of like a pinkish hue and just all sorts of blotchiness going on. And then we move over here and it is the factory BMW sand beige. Now I can move on to the other side and I'll show you guys the final product. I'm totally finished with the rear seat bottom. Very happy with the results. Very even, it looks practically brand new. And I've moved on to the rear seat back. So I've already dyed this entire section. It has four coats of the dye and I'm running into an issue right here and here. If you remember, it looked like this, but a little bit worse on that side. And that's because this dude, whoever he was, decided to dye or paint, this might be dye, uh, the rear seat belts. And I guess the front seat belts too, maybe? No, that doesn't, I don't know. He just ran out of dye, I guess he did that little section there, not that. He didn't do the center for some reason, but anyway, so whatever this is was rubbing on the seat and caused that discoloration. But that's okay, we gotta roll with the punches. So I think I'm gonna use some of this fluid leather and hopefully that will fix our issue. Just kind of spread it out there. Not sure if this will work, but I wasn't sure of this entire project to be honest with you and it's working out pretty well so far. So we'll see what happens here. I'm just gonna do some of the darker spots. I don't really wanna use this on the entire area. And this side might come out, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All right, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'll let that dry for a little bit, sand it down, and then I'll dye the whole rest of the seat back and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so that actually worked. I'm surprising myself many times in this video. You can't even tell at all, look at that. So all I did was the fluid leather that you saw and then I just dabbed on a few more coats, uh, two or three coats, and it's gone. Wonderful. Here, let me just show you exactly what I did. So I dabbed on some, and then this stuff basically will dry right in front of our eyes. And all I did on that side is I kept the hair dryer going. I'll do some dabs, dry it real quick, dab it some more, give it another dry, and we might be there. So it looks like you can do spot repairs which is beautiful. All right, so at this point, I can go ahead and apply dye to the rest of this side, so it'll match this perfectly, but the seatbelt marks are gone. After four coats, this is what the rear seat back looks like, and you can't see any of the marks from those dyed seat belts whatsoever. It looks amazing. So the back is done, let's move on to the front. Well, we have a seat back down, folks. Looks like they tried to paint this one brown first, and then paint it whatever color they painted it and we're not able to get the brown off. So I will have to order one new seat back. But at this point, we are ready to dye our first front seat. So this is what it looks like before, and hopefully it looks much better after. All right, so we're gonna go top to bottom here with the dye. And I'll wipe off any excess from any plastic pieces. A little later, it'll come right off. I can tell you this, the passenger seat is going to be sweet. This bolster was already in really good shape. All right, let's see how some of this more damaged stuff is gonna look after pass number one. This is really my big area of concern. I don't know, I got a lot of confidence in this die now after using it on the rear seats. It seems to work really well. I don't know what was sitting on the seat here. Was that sunglasses with something heavy on top of it maybe? 
<laughs> and it's there to stay. What's cool is we can dye these areas here and then we can dry it really quick with the blow dryer. And I'll do the same with these areas here that are gonna rub up against it. put this back. It's not really going to touch all that much right now. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so excited to do the driver's seat. I still have to strip it down. That is going to be the biggest difference maker. And I think on that one, I will have to use some of the fluid leather to fix the bolster on that one. But at this point, I'm just excited about it because I know I'm going to make it look good. This is working out so far. At the beginning of this video, I really didn't know what was going to happen. I was really nervous to put all the prep work in and then have it look like garbage. Um, but this is going to be sweet and we're getting there. All right. I still have a little bit of coverage to do right in this area. And then along this seam where we kind of had to scrub really hard to get the paint off. You can see it's a little darker right in there. Um, so I'm going to be doing my little spot repair method here. All right. So I'm just going to dab it on in these areas back here too, even though you're really not going to see this. We'll go ahead and just dry it right away. And then just go right back at it and I'll do this probably three times and we should be good. All right, the passenger seat is complete. The results are absolutely stunning. This looks so good. You go right up close to the areas that had a little bit more discoloration from us scrubbing and they're gone, completely gone. I know the lighting's a little bit weird here in the shop, but yeah, this looks too good. I mean, I may now have to do more work to this E39 to make the exterior match its interior, which is gonna cost me some more money. All right, guys, we're saving the best or the worst in this case for last, the driver seat. And so we're gonna start off with a little air gun action. Then we'll move on to some booger removal. Not exactly sure what this is. Okay, it's a booger on paint, apparently. There we go. Then we're gonna spray it down with our sulfuric acid. I mean, tough stuff. And we'll do this too. All right, since you guys have already seen me do a lot of this cleaning, I'm just gonna hit the bolsters here on the side. Uh, this is gonna be the most damaged part for sure. And I wanna show you guys this kind of in real time. Here we go. I think he painted this even more just to cover up some of this damage here. Let's see what we got here. It's getting there. I'm starting to wonder if, if maybe this car was just vandalized in a very specific way. You guys, like I'm gonna paint all these seats a very specific color for this guy. It'll come off with tough stuff so he didn't hate him too bad. Okay, so, I mean, honestly, it's kind of what I was expecting. Um, the leather is not cut through, though. I mean, I've seen way worse. We can repair this. I mean, this is the first time I've ever done any leather repair whatsoever. <laughs> but I think I can repair this. We did it a little bit on the back seat, and that fluid leather was really easy to work with. So I guess the moral of the story here is that if I can do all this, you guys can definitely do all this. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of the denatured alcohol here. This was probably the main reason he did this to the seats and because he wanted a new color, but all right, not too bad. I'm excited. After three hours of cleaning the seat, this is what we have. So yeah, it looks a little rough right now. That is for sure because I had to get pretty aggressive in some areas just to get all of this thick paint off. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the condition of the leather seat. Uh, I don't think we're going to need too much of the fluid leather. So let's get right to that. Right, so just get these cracks here and then spread it in just like before. I'm really surprised at how little of this stuff you actually need. I thought I'd be done with this tube after one tiny repair, but it just fills right in. All right, so I've essentially done a very light skim coat over the entire bolster to fill in all the cracks, but not to fill in the natural grain of the leather. All right, so that's it for the leather repair. We've done a little bit over there and a little bit over here. Now we're just gonna hit it with the hair dryer. 
And we only need to let this dry for probably about 15, 20 minutes since we're using the hair dryer. All right, so everything is dry. I'm just going over it all with our sandpaper. And these pads are really nice. They're only a few dollars. I'll leave a link for everything down below, don't worry. Blow it all off. All right, then we have our leather cleaning spirits. And this is our last step before the dye. And this basically dries immediately. I'll probably just wait about five minutes or so. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Definitely the worst seat we've done in this video, that's for sure. I anticipate having to do more than four coats on this driver's seat. We might be closer to six. This stuff is definitely gonna soak right into this leather since we've essentially stripped it all the way down in some areas. Oh yeah. I feel so good for this seat. If this seat could, could just talk. I would like to think it would thank us. There you go. There's your old color back, buddy. No more paint. You were hidden for so long. Your beauty covered up for no one else to see. I mean, yeah, and then we're gonna go ahead and put some more dye on there and that's how you do it. I guess that's my impression of myself doing DIY style videos. I don't know what's going on anymore, right? I've been out here for, this is uh, I guess my like two and a half days. That's what this entire project has taken. And I'm sure it's already in the comments section, but no, I'm not counting labor on the legit flip series. I explained this in another video. I'll leave the link that goes directly to that spot in the video if you wanna watch my explanation for it down below. I'm not gonna do it again, but we ain't counting labor. Just something we don't do on flip cars. Our own labor, that is. It'll make sense, look on the video. All right, so I've done two coats at this point, so we're on coat number three. And we really have to concentrate on areas like this. We might, at the end, kind of have to go back and heat the area up like this as I'm putting it on. You can still see the discoloration there where we cleaned and wiped away a lot of the factory color. So we're gonna have to restore all of that. So three more coats on top of this. I'm hoping I'll do the trick. Here it is after coat number three. Looking very promising. The bolster looks awesome. Still some wear down there. Let's keep going. And here we are after coat number four. So there's about two minutes of drying with the blow dryer in between. We're getting there. And this is coat number five. You can see the wear on the bolster just disappearing. And I think we just have one more left to do. All right, and this is after six coats. We are done with the driver's seat. All right guys, so this is what the driver's seat looked like before when it was in the car, painted and disgusting. This is what it looked like after we stripped all of the paint off. And this is what it looks like now. And I am blown away. I thought these seats were gonna be a complete nightmare. And although it took a lot of labor, it took about two and a half days roughly, um, I'm very happy with the results. And we did this for about $100, actually a little less. We'll go take a look and tally everything up here in a second, but looks like he had a box sitting on this seat for a long time. So in the next E39 video, I'll try and fix that. And we are gonna be re-dyeing the carpet, fixing all of the trim, and then putting these seats back in. So I hope you guys will join me for that video, but just take a look at these seats. Such a transformation. Any one of you at home can do this. If you have the time, if you have the weekend, you can completely restore the leather seats in your car. And even though this is a flip job, this is a very professional result. So we didn't cheap out at all. We just spent the right amount on this. We didn't go too crazy. We worked smart. And for under $100, every single one of you guys can have these results. I can't wait to get these back in the car. All right guys, let's talk budget really quick and I'm not gonna split hairs here. I think we came in right under $100, but I'm gonna go ahead and say we spent $100 on the interior restoration for the E39. So let me break this down for you so you at least know how you can spend under $100 on this project. Uh, this right here, it's 100 bucks by itself, but we only used about $10 of it and you can get a much smaller bottle for about 15 
And now we know that's all you need for an entire leather interior. So this little sponge came with it. This is about six bucks at the hardware store. This was $7, this was 10. Uh, this was probably only like $2, but I bought it in a pack of 12 for like 20 on Amazon. Amazing kit, I'll link it down below along with everything you've seen in this video. Uh, this was probably the most expensive individual product of the video. I think this is like 38 bucks, but we only used like a fifth of it, so you can reuse this on a bunch of cars. Um, this is a few dollars here. We spent 16 bucks on tough stuff. And then these I borrowed from the guys at Chicago Auto Pros for demonstration purposes. I'll just give both of these right back. Obviously the die worked out really well. Um, and then you probably have brushes and stuff like this laying around the house and tough stuff if you're cleaning your leather seats or your driveway apparently. All right guys, so if you've been keeping track during the Legit Flip series, then you know in the last video we ended with a total investment of $2,193. So if my public school education serves me well, we're at $2,293 with the complete leather seat restoration that we just did. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Stay tuned for the next E39 video. We're gonna complete the entire interior. So there's gonna be painting of trim, re of carpet, reinstallation of these seats, and then the final interior product. Uh, also, share the video with your friends, subscribe if for some crazy reason you haven't already, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.